This video is an introduction to Tilesets, and it's a free sample from the Go to 3 course you can find on Gumroad. We're going to look at what Tilesets are, why we use them, and some ways to work with Tilesets in Krita, for example. We're also going to look at the drawbacks and advantages of using Tilesets in Godot. So, enjoy! A tile set is a set of tiles, a collection of textures that are often of the same size that you use and reuse to create complex levels. You have one example on the screen, it's one we'll use in this tutorial and chapter. All the tiles are the same size, 128 pixels squared. With this, you can create paths and grasslands like you can see down here. They are all the same tiles reused ad nauseum. When you use a tile set to create a map, it is called a tile map. In Godot, you have a node with the same name called tile map that lets you author levels using any tile you want to have, but also a system called auto tiles since Godot 3. It lets you quickly create paths, walls, and anything you could think about. So why do we use tile sets? For one, with a limited number of textures, they allow us to create complex levels. As you can see on this example, the corners are based on the same grass elements. You can reuse a lot of details and textures to create complex maps a lot faster than if you were drawing everything by hand or drawing much larger chunks of a terrain by hand. They require that all of the elements tile, that's why they are called tile set, because we are going to reuse the same elements next to one another, they have to line up perfectly and to repeat perfectly. That's what you can see on this level below. If tile maps are flexible, they are not ideal for everything. For example, you wouldn't want to use one for a character or an enemy. Thankfully, you can design them in separate scenes in Godot and then bring them together to create the final game level with interactive doors, chests, and everything you'd like. Initially, games use tiles for efficiency because you can see a complete tile set, an entire level or world in your game can be contained in a single texture. And for your graphics card, it's a lot easier to draw from a single element because of the communication between your graphics card and your processor. The main limitation, well, as you can see, you're working with a grid and in general with a single tile size. This is something you will use and you should probably use for the entire game. At least that's what I recommend. One of the advantages is you can define rules to automatically place variations inside your maps, like the details you can find on the road. I'm not bothering by placing them by hand. Godot is taking care of placing them randomly for me. I really invite you to copy paste and mirror some elements. For example, in this style set, if you take this three-way element, I copied, pasted it and mirrored it horizontally to create the element you can see on its right. Let's talk about tile set design a little bit. In this file, I have some example of the tile sets you'll find in the example in the description of using tiles with Godot. You have also some templates that you can find on GitHub. They are here to help you create tile sets a lot faster with Godot, available in SVG format, and you have the Godot scenes as well and resources to help you get started faster. The first thing I want to talk about with this example from the Liberated Pixel Cup is that there's no one way to organize your tiles and tile sets. Okay, you can place them however you'd like. In Godot, you use a system called bitmasks that you paint on top of the tiles to define the rules Godot will use to place the right tiles when you are drawing. Here's our example tile set. It's made of one auto tile that uses a 2x2 bitmask on the right, some grass, 
very simple textures and one auto tile that uses a 3x3 bit mask. On the side, you can see how this rule system works. You have the 2x2 example here. You have the center tile in the middle surrounded by its corners and the horizontal and vertical lines of grass. You have three variations for the main tile. These are optional, but you can use as many or as few as you'd like for each of the tiles in the auto tile. Then you have what I call the inner corners, the corners that are reversed compared to the ones you have in the 3x3 grid in the top left. And in the bottom right, I tend to place the diagonal elements that allow for some extra connections and flexibility in your map. I'm currently working in Affinity Designer. To author the tiles, I reuse layers as much as I can. If we go down to the tile inside of it, I have some corner elements as I've showed you. If I grab any of the shapes, you'll see it move on all the corners at the same time. I use that a lot for tile sets because it's part of the background. Art-wise, you do want some sense of repetition to make your design feel coherent. It works very well when you copy and paste elements around. Moving back to the bushes, these use the 3x3 basic template. This is not a full auto tile for this element. You can use this simple setup to create bushes, fences, very simple one tile elements that will be on top of your map on a separate layer. And you can use the template above, that's a lot more complex as you can see, to create entire walls with any thickness you'd like. It's a lot more flexible, but obviously it will take a lot more time to create. These auto tiles not only work for top-down games, they will work just as well if you are making a platformer or side-scrolling game. Now you've seen I use a program called Affinity Designer for this because I'm doing vector work and um, because when I got started, Krita 4 was not available yet. You can create reusable chunks in Krita as well using their file layer system. I have an example here where I have three separate files loaded in one Krita file. You can see that because of the folder icon to their right in the layers docker. If I click one of the icons, Krita will open the source file. I have exported them from the vector files in Affinity Designer. But the point is, when you use these, if you make any change to the file, like that, and you save, the file layer will update. So you can create one corner element, like the one you can see here, and copy, paste it, and mirror it on the canvas. Here I am in Krita 4 with my dirt corner. I'm going to save it as a PNG file. You can see I already did. And um, for individual tiles like these, you can work directly with PNG files. You may not need complex layers to make them work, right? Although you can use Krita documents. Now, as I'm using an unstable version of Krita 4 at the time of recording, working with Krita files doesn't work too well. That's why I'm using a PNG file. So to add a file layer, you click the drop down icon next to the add layer button in the layers docker. Go down to file layer and then you'll click on the folder icon to open the file browser where you have your main Krita file. I have a subfolder next to it. Try to stay organized when you do this and I can select my dirt corner. It's going to use relative paths. So you can write a relative path like I'm doing here and it's going to load the file just right. Press OK to add your file in the document. Now it's under the grass here, so I have to move it a little bit. So here's how you do things then to reuse the corners as much as you can. Note I have some shadow in this example that will make it not work perfectly when you rotate it. So it only works for the top left and top right corners. I will duplicate my tile with Control J. Then I'll move it to the right with the transform tool. You use the T key for this and click and drag, keeping the shift key down. 
place it on the cell. Now I cannot transform it directly with the free transform tool, control T. You will see the current layer cannot be transformed directly. We have to add a transform mask for this to work. Creator doesn't add it automatically yet. You click the drop down menu to add a special layer type and you want to go down to transform mask. Once it's added and selected in the layers docker, press Ctrl T again to transform your layer. In the tool options panel at the bottom, you will find two icons to flip the selection horizontally and vertically. Click to flip horizontally and there you go. You have the two instances of your tile. The point of doing this is if I go back to my source file, the dirt corner here, I can make a change save and when I go back to my creator file you'll see only one update again it's a beta release but when you close and reopen the document all of the instances of the tile will have updated so you can effectively reuse one tile many times to produce very complex tile sets this file, this creator file, as you can see, I use it as a master file to pack all my various tile elements that I would design in separate creator files. I would have a tree of files with subfolders, each file in the autotile subfolder, for example, being a project like this one, the dirt autotile. And the main file has a reference to them all so that I can export my tile sets in one go. Having all your elements packed in one tile set is very convenient because you just have to go to File, Export to save it as a PNG file and update all the levels in your game. By the way, when you create tile sets, typically you will create one texture for one environment. You may use two separate textures for one environment, like they do in RPG Maker, to have everything that has to do with the background on one texture and all the elements you will layer on top of the background in a separate texture, just so that it's easier to make the levels later because you can only use one tile set, one texture on one tile map node at a time. To wrap up this video, let's talk about the limitations of tile maps, especially in Godot. The one thing you may struggle with is that tile maps are designed for performance, for efficiency, and as such, you cannot interact with them however you'd like. You can add some collisions to elements of your tile maps, like I've done on this auto tile. In Godot 3, you will see two limitations. For one, Concave shapes, like the collision polygon I have for these corners, will not work too well for now. So you want to use convex shapes instead. Concave is all the shapes that have a gap built in. If I play the game, you'll see that every shape you add acts as a collider. It won't act as an area. For example, with these gaps, I would like the character to fall into it. That's not possible with the tile map.